Welcome to lecture five of Creating Virtual Worlds with Kovice. I'm Jürgen Schulz from UCSD. And today, I'm going to talk about user interaction. As an overview of today's lecture, um, we're going to talk about the various um, options for a programmer in open cover to create user interaction. And one of them is the open VR UI menu entries. These are the menu entries that you're used to seeing. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is the tracker data and how you can access it. Um, the third topic is how you move an object. And um, the uh, fourth one is how you can get the information of the input devices buttons. And the last item we're going to talk about um, is uh, the OSG Cave UI, which is another library similar to OpenVR UI that you can also use in your program. Now, we already looked a little bit in an earlier lecture about, uh, we looked at the, the menus of open cover and how you can, what kinds of uh, widgets you can use. Now, today, we want to look at how you can program these menu, uh, these Kovice menus and the various components. So, as an example, we're looking at how you would create a sub menu off of the Kovice menu uh, in which you have two menu items for um, colors. So what we will do is we'll create, first we'll create a set menu item here, which we call colors, with three dots in this case. And then we're going to create a sub menu that is, is titled colors. And in this one, we're going to have two entries, two sub menus. The code that we're going to have to write for this is um, about this long. There's a little bit more to it, because we're not including the header file. Um, but this is about it, so it's really not that much. Um, the programming paradigms that we use in uh, the OpenVR UI are very similar to what you'll find in Java AWT. So if you've done that before, if you've written AWT code, you'll find yourself at home uh, uh, quickly in the OpenVR UI. So what we do here is we create um, an instance of, the, uh, of a, a menu um, a variable called VR menu. We create this by uh, looking at the Kovice, by searching for the Kovice menu, really. And, um, and we create a pointer to this Kovice menu. What we then do is we create um, a, a submenu item here, which we call colors with three dots. And um, we also create a, a row menu, which is, and row menu is just the typical menu where we have uh, row by row, we have our, our menu entries. Um, and we call this colors. And then we connect them. We connect um, uh, the, the colors menu to the menu entry in the, in the higher level menu. And uh, finally, we add this new submenu to the Kovice menu so that it's available when you click on that button. So this is fairly straightforward. It's, it just really just connects the various bits and pieces. Now, um, when it comes to um, adding the, the two uh, submenu entries in the colors menu, this is how that is done. Um, you would create a new submenu item, and um, uh, uh, you would add that to the, to the row menu. You can do this as many times as you want. Uh, in this case, we do it twice. And um, if we were to now add more menu items to this submenu, this is what we would do. We would create instances of whatever type we want to add to the row menu, and then add them to um, this menu. So in this case, we're looking at a slider menu item that's a that's a slider uh, checkbox, uh, which does what it should, uh, and a button menu item. The button doesn't have a, um, an icon. It's just an entry without uh, a checkbox or anything, which means that you can click on it and something can happen. Uh, these, all these items then get added to the respective row menu with these three lines. And then the last uh, three lines are about connecting the interaction handler to these menus so that you. this is where you where you make sure that the, when you actually click it, that you get the callback function um, that you write for this uh, respective menu item. Uh, you get that triggered. And um, now here in this, uh, on this slide, we look at this, uh, uh, these callback functions that we need to write in order to get um, to know in our program that the user has clicked on one of our menu items. And for that, we need to register and write a function called menu event. That's the important one. And there's also one that's called menu release event, which you can use in case you want to know when the button 
um, has been released after clicking on the, on the menu item. But normally, we'll, we'll use menu event, which makes it so that as soon as you click, the menu opens. And uh, this is the callback function. It's, um, it's part of, it becomes part of your class for the plugin. Uh, the plugin has to be uh, derived from, um, from, the, um, uh, from co-plugin anyway. And then it provides this callback function menu event. And if you write that, then you'll, you'll pass it a parameter which in turn is going to be compared to the respective uh, menu widget. And the code that you write after this uh, comparison is the code that's going to be executed when the user clicks on this menu item. Now, the next um, quick topic that I am addressing today is how you can access tracker data. Uh, this is for when you, your application's running, you want to position something somewhere, perhaps, and you need to know where the hand is located at or where the head is located at if whatever you position is related to the head. So um, this slide summarizes how to do that. You can, uh, with these lines here, and the m most important one here is the cover arrow get pointer mat dot get trans, so, or the get pointer mat in by itself. Um, that gets you the matrix for the wand. And the pointer mat is, is a 4 by 4 matrix. And if we uh, also call it get trans on it, that gets us the translational component. So in this case, we only get the position. We don't care about the orientation. If we cared about the orientation, we would have to call it without the get trans. Now, what we do here is we, we create a, a vector, an open scene graph vector variable for the uh, pointer position. And then we also create a position for a position for a place that's 1,000 millimeters. And note that in Covice, all coordinates are in millimeters. 1,000 um, millimeters from this hand position. 1,000 millimeters is a meter. It's about three feet. And um, uh, that makes it so that we can define a, uh, a line that allows us to use this line and intersect it with something in the scene um, as long as we're not more than a meter uh, from it. And what we do here is we, we convert this, this pointer position, which we originally with get pointer mat, we get it in, in room coordinates. Um, in this case, we uh, uh, convert that to um, um, uh, the uh, world coordinates by multiplying with the uh, point of pass to world variable. Now, when instead of the uh, wand position, if you wanted the head position, then what we do is instead of calling get pointer mat, we'll call get viewer mat, and the rest is the same thing. And if we uh, wanted the hand position or the head position in this case, um, in object coordinates rather than world coordinates, we would call, um, uh, we would multiply the uh, matrix that we get from get viewer mat, and we would multiply it with get inf base mat, which is the inverse of the of Covice's object um, uh, uh, space matrix. So that's how you can get into your coordinates, your for instance, your viewer coordinates into object space, so you know where in your object, in your data set, the viewer actually is located at. Now, if you're going to grab an object and you're going to move it with the pointer, which often happens, you want to take some object from here and move it somewhere else, then what you really want to do is y you want to register the mouse click. And then every frame that's rendered by the, by the display system, you want to update the position and move the object with the, um, with the mouse, with the wand. Um, in order to do that, there's a little piece of code here in which we distinguish between um, the um, object to world matrix, which is the transformation matrix of the object in uh, world coordinates. And we also uh, look at the wand to world matrix, which is the, the matrix of the wand in world coordinates. And um, when we do that, and we get the, um, the, um, the wand position from by using the, previous, uh, the c um, code on the previous slide, we can get the uh, wand position that the wand is in currently. And if we have saved the previous frames wand position in last wand to world, then we have both of these matrices. And now if we're going to figure out how far do we have to move the object from the last frame to the current frame, then what we do is we multiply the inverse of this previous wand position with the current wand position, which gets us the matrix for the transformation from where the object was before um, to where the object is now. And then we just uh, apply this matrix that we just calculated to the object's world uh, coordinates, um, or world uh, transformation matrix, rather, uh, which includes orientation. 
and um, then we'll move the object with the hand. So I recommend that if you're going to do this, move something with the hand, then try this code and you'll be, you'll be happy to see that it actually works. Um, now the uh, next topic is on button handling. Um, we talked about the position of the wand so far. Now I want to talk about the, the buttons on the wand. Uh, typically we have, um, we have at least three buttons on the wand that we use in our applications. And Kovacs is designed to, uh, to, to expect that there are these three buttons. You can still use it with just one button, but it's really a lot easier to use with three buttons. When there's more buttons supported, um, you will have to take care of uh, getting access to these additional buttons yourself. They're not automatically supported. Now, button handling is, is relatively simple because you, you can just get the uh, callback that, that um, it tells you when a button was pressed, or you can, you can pull the, um, the button state of your input device. But what the, the problem is with that is that if you have multiple plugins that are loaded at the same time, um, and you always also have your main Kovice menu, is that if you click on, a, um, on an object in your scene and you're your mouse cursor, which is actually a line, intersects with other objects in the scene from other plugins, or even the Kovice main menu, then when you click and you're not careful, then this click is going to be registered by all these objects, uh, including the Kovice menu, and then you'll trigger multiple things at the same time, which is normally not the desired effect. So in order to avoid this um, clicking of multiple objects and triggering multiple functions at the same time, you have to uh, register the mouse clicks, the buttons, for your plugin at the time that you want exclusive access to these buttons. And in order to do this, there's a, there's a class that Kovice provides, um, and that's called uh, a Code Tracker Button Interaction. And this is the class that you need to use in order to, um, to register the button, to, to sort of uh, grab the buttons as long as you need them so that no one else uses them, not even the Kovice main menu. And then the rest of the slide is about how you use this class. So um, I'm not going to go over this in detail, um, but since you can get the slides, you, if you're going to write this code, um, you just pull out the slide and you'll see how it works. But um, uh, the basic idea is that you, you register your interaction, you give it a name, um, for instance, interaction. Uh, that you do in the constructor. And then you can, you, whenever you need to, to grab this button, um, you can uh, you can call this routine where you register an interaction. And then you get these callbacks where, um, or these, these variables are rather are being set. Uh, for instance, was started, that's, that's going to be enabled or true whenever you, the user just pressed the button in, the, in, the, in this frame, when it's a new button press. Um, there's another one, is running, that's true when uh, the button's been pressed more than one frame ago, when it's, when it's not a new press, but it's still held down. Uh, and then was stopped is being set to is set to true and, and will return true when you query it um, at the time that the button has just been released. And that allows you to do your interaction where you can then grab something, move it, and um, and then at the end when the button is released again, you should uh, free the uh, button again so that the other applications can use it. And the last item on, uh, in this lecture that I want to address is the OSGK UI. So far, we've, call, we've talked about the, um, the OpenVR UI. There's also another library, which for historical reasons is a separate library, um, which um, we integrated into uh, Kovice and made it compatible with it, is the OSGK UI, which provides a menu system that looks like this, where the, the menu items are little, little rectangular, um, uh, like card-like objects that you can put somewhere in the, in the virtual environment. Um, and we still use the cave UI for a few things. We normally don't use them for these, for these card-like um, items, but instead we use the Kovice menus, which are, which are more uh, useful in most cases. Um, but we do use the pick box in many cases. The pick box is a, is a structure, a class, that allows you to create a, an invisible wireframe, an in invisible box around uh, an object, whatever it is, um, in order to be able to grab this object when the user intersects with this box. And that can, that can be useful if your data set is very sparse. Imagine you have a data set that just consists of five little points that are very small. Then um, if you're going to click on these, these points to move them, 
uh, and you imagine you had to um, intersect the points with the laser pointer, that would be very tedious and maybe impossible. So with the pick box, you can, you can create this invisible box around these points and then query whether the user intersected the pick box. And there's already um, a set of functions that makes this query a lot easier than if you had to write this uh, from scratch. There are another couple of functions or classes in uh, OSG KVUI that I want to mention. One is, one is a calculator, which provides you a, a calculator-like um, utility for the virtual environment. And uh, the flowtometer, which is a way which is demonstrated here, uh, it allows you to adjust a floating point value in, within the virtual environment just with the, the cursor uh, without using a keyboard. Uh, that can be useful if you have if you have to find adjust um, parameters right inside of the the virtual reality cave. For more information about this topic, um, I would uh, refer you to the IVL wiki. That's the the wiki page in my group that I also mentioned earlier, which is on the interface between Open Scene Graph and Open Cover, and you'll find uh, some of the information from the slides I just gave you, uh, and more information about how to write your own um, interaction code uh, for open cover. This concludes uh, lecture five. Thank you very much.